All right, welcome back to Canal and Bell. So yesterday we broke down a lot of the trade that took place between the Pelicans and the Lakers. And as everybody always asks, who won the trade? Uh, you and I both agree, like probably both both teams were helped in that one. But there sure. definitely were some losers that were not involved in the trade, which is why they find themselves on the outside looking in now. So the team that was really mentioned the most with the Lakers as possibly trading for Anthony Davis was the Celtics. So you've got some very frustrated Celtics fans. And right. it sounds to the point now or even the Celtics themselves are saying, uh-oh, we might have a bigger problem on our hands as Kyrie Irving, who has the player option, is expected to decline. Um, he's supposed to meet with the management soon. And then, whoa, Adrian Wojnarowski this morning said that the Celtics are, quote, really concerned, almost to the point of resignation, that Kyrie Irving is going to leave them. It changes the dynamic. So as of now, the Celtics, they have – the numbers 14, 20, and 22nd overall picks in the draft, which you have stated several times, and most people agree, it is a three-player draft. So you're like three rookies that aren't going to have an impact. The Celtics don't want that to be their, their, the majority of their team. But my question for you is, if we all know this, who that, what are you going to get for those? Um, yeah, I, I don't <laughs> know what you could get. I mean, 14 and 20 together might get you – I don't know, some, some mar marginally better than 14. I might get you up to like six or seven. But you're I, not getting but, in that top three. And you're still, at that point, there is a market drop off from three to four. I would say there's even a, a, a there's a market drop off from like four and five, which is, you know, kind of Darius Garland and, and, and DeAndre Hunter, like four and five to like six and seven. So you're not getting anywhere near something that's going to really be a value to you. The Celtics are... What's the word I want to Do use? Do you think Danny Ainge they, misplayed this all? Like, because he's been collecting, amassing all of these picks, and it was supposed to be for some of these big moves, and really the only big move that he was able to pull off was Kyrie, and now Kyrie's leaving. Yeah, well, is he, the criticism of Danny Ainge fair? Because I think it is. Yeah, at this point, I mean, I I thought he did a like, plans. Look, they're they're the the end the end result is always what you're going to be judged off of. The swing and the try was a valiant effort. You know what I mean? Like he saw he had a plan. He executed, you know, most of his plan. It came to fruition. He just didn't get it done when the big deals were there to be had. I mean, you know, you weren't able to keep Kyrie there, and obviously you missed out on AD, but the rest of it was executed perfectly. He had done a good job doing it. So I have mixed emotions about, you know, laying all the blame on Danny Ainge. At the end of the day, yes. But, you know, he was able to navigate most of that brilliantly and get, you know, you got some great pieces in the process and Jalen and Jason Tatum and, you know, Terry Rozier and Marcus Smart. Like, he did a really good job with a lot of that. You know, they just haven't been able to get the big guy. This is this is sad for Celtics because when you talk about losers like in the NBA with the Celtics and the Knicks after the AD trade and neither one of them got what they wanted, this stings way more for the Celtics than it does for the Knicks. Right. The Celtics were right there. The Celtics were in the conversation coming into this year as a potential NBA championship level team. And if Kyrie leaves them, they are as far away from that as, as you know, anybody in the Eastern Conference. And I don't. I, they'll make the playoffs – but they are not a championship-level team. This thing's way more for the Celtics than it does for, for the Knicks. All right, let me ask you this. Does this give you any consolation that you say, man, a year ago we were making a really nice run in the playoffs without Kyrie. Yeah. We lose Kyrie. Who cares? He's been maybe a – I don't want to say cancer in the locker room because it's such a cliche term, but it was not working with Kyrie. Right, like for maybe, one reason or another. Right. Maybe you're better off where you were a year ago, or do you think that's – not a realistic look I don't think you get to put the genie back in the bottle very often right I think you 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 kind of you missed out on on that that window of time things very rarely uh wind up coming coming back and being the exact same um you're going to bring Gordon Hayward back next year who I think will fit better with those those other pieces than, than Kyrie did on the court um but you still don't know what version of Gordon you're going to get uh and I love Gordon I I, I Gordon was one of my rooks I don't know that Gordon as your number one player is championship level team, right? right? Um, and I don't think that any of those younger guys are ready to be number one players either. They're not at that point in their careers where they can carry you. And so I would say again, that team, they'll be, they'll probably be in and around the same number that they were this year, maybe fractionally less. I don't see them winning more games. But it'll feel different because you won't have that like that, that, that turmoil and that 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 um you know just general feel of 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 turmoil around the the program. Like Brad Stevens will have that group playing harder 
giving more effort, looking like they're on the same page. They'll just be a lower ceiling for them. So there were some conflicting reports out there on uh, Jason Tatum, that right. he was on the block, that he was, and then they weren't going to uh, have him available. And then Shams Sharania reported that the Boston was open to dealing Tatum or Memphis future first, but not as a package deal. For for Jason Tatum specifically, What like what's his ceiling as far as how good can he be? I don't know. Because he was, um, I mean, talk about that playoff run. He was insane. Yeah, he was great in the playoff run, and then he took a step back this year. Right. So, you know, he's still a baby. He's only, what is he? He should be a junior in college. Should be going into a senior year in college right now. Yeah. Like, he, he, he's a baby, so I want to be fair to him. He's a really, really good young player. Um, but I couldn't tell you right now if he'll he'll turn into a number one or, you know, if he'll be a good number two. Or, I, I, I don't know. Right. There's an element of volume to his game where, you know, he needs the ball. He needs to be able to get into his – you know, his bag, and he's going to volume shoot. There have been volume shooters like Kobe who are some of the best to ever do it. Um, there have been volume shooters that, that you know, can't really produce on a championship-level team because they're volume shooters. So I don't, I don't know where he falls. It's too early in his career. Uh, so one of the questions I was going to see, what do you think Al Horford does with his uh, player option? So the Boston Celtics uh, from Woj just tweeted out just a couple seconds ago, Al Horford will not exercise the $30 million option in his 2019-2020 contract and become an unrestricted free agent. League sources tell ESPN, Horford and the Celtics both have interest in working toward a new deal. LA, in buddy. LA. You don't think he's going to stay there? LA. Really? I, I'm not, I don't know where he's going to stay. I'm telling, I'm saying if I'm LA, that's another. Oh, you're calling him what? right away. Yeah, yeah. dude. Like, and he's a great locker room what? dude. Like Defensive a, presence, knocks down jumpers, just ties it all together. That's the perfect big for LA. Yep. All right. So we talked about the Celtics. The Knicks were the other team, the organization that had so much optimism. There was, you know, hey, we're going to get Kevin Durant. That puts us in the market for Kyrie. Then obviously everything totally comes apart when Kevin Durant tears his Achilles. Are they still going to offer the max to Kevin Durant? Uh, yeah. And does he take it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's I mean, I, 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 that I can't tell you. But you've, if you're the Knicks, first of all, like getting rid of Chris Stapps Porzingis um, was, I mean, I, I, I don't know the behind the scenes. So I, let me give them a little bit of credit. Maybe, right. maybe it was just a completely, like a completely fractured relationship. It was a poop show of a relationship. I don't know. But you don't give away Chris Stapps for because you got cap like problems you, right. you don't do that right. um they did it um and they put all their eggs in this basket and then you know kevin durant gets hurt i don't think you get to back out now like i think you still got to swing at kevin durant give him the two years it takes to get him healthy the problem becomes now you, i don't know that you're getting anybody to come with kevin durant so now you're sitting there with kevin durant and the rest of your roster has no real shape mm -hmm. so you know i guess what you do is you swing at him you put him on the shelf and you start to shape a roster around him so then in a couple years, you could take a swing at something. That would be the only play. Because right now, that roster has no... Well, you could have a really good pick in two years. You know, like if you're bad again. If, yeah. you, if you take R.J. Barrett with the third pick. But that, year, those guys, don't, Kevin, they don't help you. Right. Like it, you, you could take Zion and to, to play with LeBron, and he doesn't help them this year. He's exciting. But those kids, they've been, they're not ready. They're not ready. Like that, in, a, in a few years from now, he will be. But right now, he won't be. And so... You know, if you're the Knicks, again, you're still stuck in this place where you, you if you have Kevin Durant uh, and then you wind up with a number one pick, yay. But what Kevin Durant's looking at the number one pick, like, bro, it's shop that. Right. Get me something that can help me right now. Yep. Uh, and that's what they're looking at. They have spots for two max free agents. They'll be interested to see what they do. All right, we're going to take a break. Our buddy Pete Briscoe put out his top 100 list, his top 100 players in the NFL. I think he's so off on a couple of these. <laughs> I'm going to destroy Pete Briscoe next on Canel and Bell.